These next two weeks are the most important weeks in American history. If you're watching in the future, I suppose you'll be able to look back on how close we were to losing our country, or you'll be wondering how we lost our republic. In 1787, Benjamin Franklin left the Continental Congress and a woman on the street yelled to him, Doctor, do we have a monarchy or a republic? And Ben Franklin responded, A republic, if you can keep it. Franklin's quip rings true now more than ever. President Trump left his bunker and took the podium on June 1st to say a long list of ludicrous nonsense like claiming to be an ally of peaceful protesters. To say, get that son of a bitch off the field right now, out, he's fired. He's fired! Calling the protesters domestic terrorists. These are acts of domestic terror. And threatening states with martial law. If a city or state refuses to take the actions that are necessary to defend the life and property of their residents, then I will deploy the United States military and quickly solve the problem for them. Before the speech, Trump ordered that Lafayette Square be cleared of the protesters. This is a cruel, unnecessary, and violent act. Here, watch yourself. Wolf, you got people. All right, uh, y'all, look, take a look, I'm Don. Sure hold on. Talk about now. Uh, this tear gas is now being fired. Uh, you can see what's going on. The police are moving. They're trying to disperse this crowd that has gathered at Lafayette Park. Uh, clearly, they don't want these protesters to be there, even though they were peaceful. Uh, they were just uh, screaming a little bit, uh, but they were not uh, endangering anyone. And all of a sudden, tear gas and, and these protesters now, they're going to presumably uh, run away and, and try to regroup elsewhere. But this is a clearly a very, very dangerous situation, and it's unfolding uh, as we await the President of the United States to make a statement from the Rose Garden on all of this that has unfolded over this past week. This speaks volumes to Trump's cowardice, and I mean this, please do not buy any national security argument from the right about this. Nixon went and spoke to anti-war protesters in D.C., Clinton went on unplanned jogs around D.C., President Obama frequently surprised tourists by taking a walk around Lafayette Square. People weren't cleared out when they went there. How you doing? How's business? And the president was too much of a coward to face protesters from behind the army that he set loose on D.C. that he needed them to be violently cleared on last second notice. Hiding in a bunker, and he is embarrassed that people know that, so what does he have to do? He has to sick police on peaceful protesters. Trump then walked out of the front door of the White House, which is very, very rarely used by presidents. It's a ceremonial entrance. News reporters use it as backdrops. So he walks out of the front door of this giant entourage, and he looks like a boxer going to a ring with this sized entourage. All right, I just counted. There's anywhere between 28 to 35 people in this entourage, not counting security. The counting disparity comes from the fact that Jared Kushner and several of the other young men in Trump's administration all look like the doll from the movie The Boy, so I can't be absolutely sure that I'm not counting them twice. Then he goes across the park. He doesn't wave to anyone because he doesn't have anyone to wave to because he gassed all of them. He doesn't say a word to anyone. Then he gets in front of St. John's Church, and somebody hands him a Bible. He wasn't carrying it himself. Someone hands him a Bible, which he then holds upside down and bounces around like it's a baby he's trying to put to sleep. Before this, he actually had a call with Putin, so maybe Putin gave him advice on how to attack his own people and attack the press. I mean, look at this hit on this Australian reporter. He hits him sideways with the glass pot cover, and then the punch, and his partner has to stop him. Alright folks, welcome to everyone's favorite game show, Freeze Frame, guess what unfortunate thing happens next. Today's contestant is you, the viewer, and lucky for you, you have the opportunity to win our grand prize liking this video. Now, in order to win our grand prize, you must answer this question correctly. You get one guess in five seconds. If you answer wrong, you go home with our consolation prize, subscribing to me on YouTube and following me on Twitter. Remember, when the buzzer goes off, you must give your answer. Are you ready? If you guess C, you are correct. Remember to collect your prize in the comment section down below. Now, let's get back to the speech. Trump threatens states with federal troops if the governors don't dominate their citizens. And as expected, the media went into a panic. Once again, that pesky left-wing media was trying to stir the pot because we all know using the military to put down protests is a very American practice. That's why we've given sanctions to 30 countries for doing the exact same thing this past year. 
Trump then goes on to announce the military occupation of Washington, D.C. to show the American people what it will look like if they dare use their constitutional rights to suggest that racism is bad. These next two weeks are so important to America because this madman ultimately gets to decide whether or not we'll have to fight our own soldiers for the ability to assemble. Trump wants martial law, but what are people doing to stop it? While the Pentagon outed him by revealing that they had soured on his request for troops and that they had to deny his request to use tanks on civilians, all four living presidents condemned Trump and in their own way told him that he sucks. For those who have been talking about protests, just remember that this country was founded on protest. It is called the American Revolution, said President Obama. The purest person to ever become president, Jimmy Carter, said, we need a government as good as his people and we are better than this. President Bush, who really avoids making public statements for obvious reasons, said those who set out to silence those voices do not understand the meaning of America. President Clinton said people of power should go first, answer the questions, expand who is us and shrink who is them, accept some blame, and assume more responsibility. General James Mattis, most known for leading the U.S. military during the second Iraq war, said publicly that Trump is a threat to our democracy, and General Allen, the general that led the U.S. assault on ISIS, whistled the same tune stating that Americans will look back on June 1st, 2020 as the day America died. Joe Biden, the man who Donald Trump will lose to in November, said, look at where we are now and think anew. Is this who we are? Is this who we want to be? And as we all know, folks, June 1st is the day that all Republican senators do a social media news detox. None of them happen to see what happened despite it being on the front page of every newspaper around the world. Do you have any concerns about what unfolded at the White House last night? Was what the president did last night right? Was it an abuse of power? Was it an abuse of power? Was what the president did and what unfolded at the White House last night appropriate? Here, if you want to reach out to our office, feel free to... Are you concerned at all about what happened at the White House last night? Sorry, I'm late for lunch. Do you think what we saw last night at the White House... I'm late for lunch. The gassing of White House protesters, do they have a right? I didn't watch that. Fortunately enough to know what happened. Was that the right thing to do? Didn't really see it. I don't have that comment. I didn't follow up. Except Ted Cruz. And we know this for two reasons. The first is that he said this. I'm at the cameras here to just talk about... Which... Was it an abuse of power, what we saw last night outside the White House? By the protesters, yes. And the second is that we know he used his Twitter account to watch porn. Also, remember when he ate a booger during a debate? Trump's authoritarian fantasy is playing out in front of our eyes, and unfortunately for us, we are the ones he has declared war on. The courage of senators, generals, the House, the Pentagon, and everyday Americans will be remembered in the history books if we prevent Trump from living his dictator make-a-wish. There is some good news, though. The American people seem to have turned on aspiring dictator Trump. People don't like the idea of the U.S. military in the streets and being used on U.S. civilians. I've seen conservatives, Republicans, and even libertarians breaking from him. This doesn't mean they won't vote for him. But rather, all Americans seem unified that Trump should not be our dictator. Well, everyone except fascists. If you're sitting here wondering if you're a fascist because you still support Trump, then I have some news for you. You are. Now, I'm going to close on a clip from Eleven Films' Midnight in Washington ad, God bless the United States, because Lord knows we're going to need it. Thanks for watching, and be sure to click like and subscribe down below. History will not be kind to Donald Trump. I think we all know that. Not because it will be written by never Trumpers, but because whenever we have departed from the values of our nation, we have come to regret it. And that regret is written all over the pages of our history. He has betrayed our national security. He has compromised our elections, and he will do so again. You will not change him. You cannot constrain him. Truth matters little to him. What's right matters even less. And decency matters not at all.